The Today's Word Podcast with Rick Pena. Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pena, and I bring you Today's Word for January 18th, 2018. I'm teaching a series entitled The Benefits of Prayer and Fasting, and this is part 10. I'm excited about it. So in this series, we already looked at a 40-day fast that Jesus went on, a 40-day fast that Moses went on, and now we're looking at a 40-day fast that Elijah went on. We've been looking at the story of Elijah and this fast for a couple of days, and I want to go back to it uh, this morning. So Elijah um, felt like he was burnt out. And this all really started when he was on the run. Jezebel wanted to have him killed. He goes on the run. He gets really to the point where he wanted God to take his life. Now, in the previous chapter, in 1 Kings chapter 17 or 18 or 16, you see him as a mighty man of God. In chapter 19, he was at the point where he wanted to die. He needed to be restored. He needed to be rejuvenated. So the Lord sent an angel. The angel led Elijah to get some rest. While he was sleeping, the, the angel baked him a cake, got him some something to drink, woke him up, said, eat and drink. He ate, sent him back to sleep, woke him up again, gave him some more food. After that, the angel led him to go on a, a journey with the Lord. And so he did. He went on this journey. He walked all the way to the mountain of God. It took him 40 days. He didn't eat for 40 days and 40 nights. And while he was there on the mountain of God, he had this supernatural encounter with God. We saw this yesterday where there was all this wind and God was not in the wind. And then there was an earthquake and the Lord was not in the earthquake. And then there was fire and then the Lord was not in the fire. And then there was a still small voice and God was in the voice. That's where I stopped the story yesterday. And that's where I'm going to pick it up uh, from today. So, the voice that it was God, the voice says to Elijah, ask the question, Elijah, why are you here? Now, let me just pause right here to say that if God ever asks you a question, it's not because he doesn't know the answer. Obviously, God knows the answer. What God wanted was for Elijah to vocalize what he had internalized, right? So he had internalized some things that was leading him to these bouts with depression and all these things, even thoughts of suicide. So God wanted him to vocalize what he had internalized. And so so Elijah did. Elijah said, well, Lord, all powerful, I've always served you the best I can. But the Israelites have broken their agreement with you. They destroyed your altars and killed your prophets. Okay, that's not a big deal as far as he's concerned. Why would you want to kill yourself because of that? Oh, here it goes. Then he said this, and I am the only prophet left alive. And now they want to kill me. He says, I'm the only one left. See, this is what I believe was the real main issue. It wasn't that... There was a death threat on his life. There had been a death threat on his life for years. When Elijah stood before Ahab and said, it's not going to rain till I say it rains, and then he left, Ahab at that time was sending people to try to find Elijah to have him killed. So he was on the run for 42 months, for three and a half years. That was not really the issue. The main issue was that he thought he was all by himself. He, he felt all alone. He thought he was the only man of God left. And being alone, or at least feeling alone, is a very dangerous thing. And the devil, look at me for a minute, the devil will do all that he can to get you to feel like you are all alone, all by yourself. If the devil can get you to feel like you are isolated from other people, then he is going to torment you in your mind. And this is exactly what he did to Elijah. And unfortunately, this is exactly what he does to people, even good people, every day. You can be in a room full of people and feel all alone because you are being tormented in your mind to feel like you are all by yourself, like you don't have anyone else. And this is a terrible feeling, and it is not the will of God. So then the Lord said this to Elijah. The Lord gave him clear instructions. The Lord said, now listen. Forget all that. Go back. Take the road that leads to the desert around Damascus. Go into Damascus and anoint Hazael as king over Aram. Then anoint Jehu, the son of Nishmi, as king over Israel. So now he's giving him something to do. He's giving him something to focus on. Then he said this. Oh, I love this part. He said, next, anoint Elisha, the son of Shaphat, from Abel-Meholah, 
and he will be the prophet that takes your place. So he even identified his successor. He says, this is the guy that I want you to take everything that I poured into you, and I want you to take that and I'll pour it into Elisha. So now Elisha has an Elisha to work with, right? That also gave him some motivation. And then he said this, um, he explained that Jehu will kill anyone who escapes his L sword, and Elisha will kill anyone who escapes from Jehu's sword. And then he says, listen, and don't feel all alone. Come on, man. Who told you that? He says, I still have 7,000 people down in Israel who have never bowed down to Baal or kissed an idol. Don't think that because these people were submitted to idol worship that they are that they are idol worshipers. No, I got 7,000 people down there that have been faithful. You feel all alone? I have 7,000 men and women of God still left. So he built him back up. In that statement, the Lord renewed his purpose. He provided him encouragement. He now knew that he had a successor that he needed to uh, you know, pour into. And he discovered the fact that he was not the only one left. All of that happened with one word from God. All of that, his whole life changed with one word from God. And that word from God changed Elijah's narrative. Because think about it this way. Had Elijah killed himself while he was depressed, then we wouldn't be talking about him. I wouldn't be talking about him to you today. Like the way that we are. I mean, so so he is on the pantheon, right? Uh, when we get to the New Testament, we're going to talk about Jesus, Moses, and Elijah, right? But that would not have happened had he killed himself while he was depressed, but he needed a word. And this one word changed the narrative of his life. This one word redirected him and reestablished him on his destiny. The devil is going to try to derail you from your destiny, but one word from God can get you back on the path, and that's what this one word from God did for him. So what does this mean to you today? Now, normally, I get to this point before I start giving you some points. The truth is, I've already been preaching. I I've given you a lot already, but I'm going to give you two more things as we close out. You ready? Here we go. Number one, the devil, and I've made this point. I'm going to further drive it home. The devil wants you to feel all alone. That's really what he wants. And God never wants you to feel that way. Elijah delved into depression because he thought he was the only prophet left alive. He thought he was the only one. And because of that, Satan was attacking his mind continually over and over and over again. See, the feeling of being all alone opened the door to fear. And fear opened the door to thoughts of suicide. Elijah wanted to die. This is why feeling all alone is so dangerous. And if you're watching this this morning, in the name of Jesus, if you feel all alone, if you've been battling thoughts of suicide, in the name of Jesus, I curse those thoughts of suicide. I declare that you will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord, that you will look up and not down, that you will feel the presence of God flooding your heart even right now. This is not the time for you to feel all alone. God has promised to always be with you. He would never leave you. He would never forsake you. He would never turn his back on you. The devil is a liar. He's been lying to you, telling you that you are all alone, but you are not. You are in the presence of God even now while you're watching this video. You could be in, the front of, in front of your computer, in a cubicle, on a train, in a car. I don't care where you are watching this, but I declare that the presence of God is just flooding you. You feel his presence now. You are not alone. You are not alone. And see, and this is why it's so dangerous. The Bible says in, in the creation that God said, and God said, and God said, and God said, and then God saw everything that he said, and it was all good. But the only thing that God said was not good was for Adam to be all alone. You were not designed to be all alone. You were designed to have a vertical, you know, upward relationship with God and a horizontal or outward relationship with other people. You're sup there are no lone rangers in the body of Christ. You're supposed to have relationships with people. And God sends you into this world to have relationships with others. And he will send others to have relationships with you. So feel that. Embrace that. And never feel all alone. Because God is always with you. My second and final point is that one word from God can turn any hopeless situation around. See, one minute, Elijah wanted to die. The next minute... He had purpose, direction, and motivation. And it all came with a word from God. And it all came during a fast. We're talking about the benefits of fasting and praying. This all happened in a fast. He got a word from God in a fast. While he was fasting, while he was seeking God, he got a word from God. And that word from God turned his situation around forever. See, you were designed to live by every word. 
that proceeds from the mouth of God. It's not just by bread only shall a man live. You're supposed to live by every word. We're supposed, God's words to us, they are spirit and they are life. So let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you to repeat after me in faith from a believing heart. Say this. Say, Father, this is a season of expectation for me. I make the time to fast and pray. I spend time in your presence daily. I seek and hear your voice. I am restored by every word you speak to me. I combat feelings of loneliness. I am never all alone. You are always with me. I am never hopeless because I am never helpless. Your presence in my life, it lifts me up daily and I live by every word you release over me, Father. I declare this by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. This is today's word. Apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, go to todaysword.org. There's a big subscribe button. Subscribe. Get the messages. They're going to be a blessing to you. And please, I know you know someone that needs to watch this video, so share it with them. So share with them and tell them that you're there with them, that you're there for them, that God is with them, and so that they can combat these feelings of loneliness so that we can be who God has called us to be. One word from God can change your life forever. Go now and walk in the newness of the life that Christ Jesus died to provide you. God bless you.